Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Pushing Polygons. Today, we're going to be talking about the original Xbox console, some of the games that came on it, a little bit about the console's history, and whether or not it's worth buying one in 2022. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and let's jump into it. The original Xbox console was announced at CES 2000 between that faithful meeting between Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Bill Gates. It doesn't matter what you think, Bill. We all know how that went, of course, with the unsuspecting AMD engineers being embarrassed down in the front row. The original Xbox would then go on to feature a Intel Pentium 3 custom design chip running at 733 megahertz. The system would run a very edited version of Windows 2000 and would support Direct 3D, which was, of course, Direct X, which is what the Xbox was named after, as it was originally thought of as the Direct Xbox. When the console finally launched in the fall of 2001, fans across the United States and Europe were excited the console went on to sell 16 million units in the United States and 24 million units worldwide, although dwarfed by their competition at the time, the PlayStation 2. Microsoft's first entry into the gaming industry was not a complete failure. It gave the company experience with game development, with business practices that they weren't used to, and with how to customize an online environment. As in the first year of the console's launch, so early 2002, Microsoft launched what we know now as Xbox Live, where individuals could get online on their console and play with other members of the community through dedicated gaming servers. Of course, this was something new to the console sphere of the market, even though PC players had been playing with these options for years. Then, of course, on the front side of the console, you have the four ports for controllers and couch co-op play. This allows for multiplayer gaming. Halo 1 was a great title for this, as there were many others. On the back side of the console, you have a Ethernet port, which was a first in the gaming industry, as this allowed for you to connect to Xbox Live, which we will discuss a little bit later. There also was a port for HD televisions, as Bill Gates phrased it at the time, and of course, a power, uh, power port. Uh, two additional buttons on the front of the console, of course, are the eject button and the power button. One additional thing that you'll see in the video here is I do have a modded console. This console allows for HDMI out, which is digital to digital, but we'll get into more of that later. Now, before we get into talking about how we're going to connect the Xbox console to a modern television, such as an LG C9. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding educational or even somewhat entertaining, please hit that like button. It'll help the video get propagated to more people across YouTube. And if you want to see more content like this, whether it's other consoles, deeper dives into games, or even some discussion about retro games, hit that subscribe button, and of course, ding that bell. It'll let you know when videos go up on the channel. But before we dive right back into it, I want to ask you guys one question. What game on the original Xbox do you love? What game would you like to see them remaster and bring forward to current gen consoles? Let me know down in the content. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're not into modern consoles, let me know what game you have the fondest memories of on the original Xbox. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start talking about how you're going to connect this console to new 
televisions. Dang. Now, I have LG televisions. I have LG OLEDs. One of the things that LG does so that you can connect older AV devices to their televisions, and I believe this is still offered up through the C1, I don't know yet whether or not it's going to be on the C2, is they offer a dongle like this. It is a basically a splitter where you can see you have your yellow, red, and white, so your RCA, and it's combined into a one jack, which will plug into the back of the television. This will allow you to connect in an Xbox through standard AV uh, into the TV, as most televisions nowadays are ditching standard AV ports and going with HDMI only. Now, the next option you have, and this is definitely stepping up a little bit in price and requires a separate device, is you have the RetroTank 5X. Now, this is a AV component switcher, to, or excuse me, input to HDMI output. So you can connect your Xbox into this device and it will output through the HDMI that is uh, here on the back and you will be able to connect that directly into your television. So this is an interesting little device. It does uh, do additional image scaling. Uh, and something you may want to consider. The last option that I have to show off today, and this is definitely going to be more costly, but something that you probably have seen on the internet as of late, and that would be the Xbox. Get this to focus. Oh, that would be the HDMI port here on on the original xbox this is a mod uh the mod on the hdmi port is called the is called well it was called the make megahertz now i believe it's just known as xbox hd plus the mod is basically a digital to digital connecting right into the motherboard and allowing for digital signal to be transmitted directly to the tv it also allows for a little additional upscaling of the image so those are three options to allow you to connect to a modern television. That isn't all inclusive. There is also the Hyperkin AV port to HDMI. Now the quality on that, if you're not uh, too, too fussy, uh, is going to be good enough. Basically plugs into the AV port on the back of the Xbox and it terminates in an HDMI port again, uh, converting it in the cable. Uh, that will be an analog to digital conversion. So the again, the image will be good enough. It might not be quite as clear as uh, you would see with the Make Megahertz or Xbox HD Plus um, mod. You're not sensitive to those things, then it will be good enough. And that's uh, how you will get those connected to a modern television uh, today. So... Let's, now that we've discussed how you're going to get the hardware connected to the TV, let's talk about some of the games. And the games I'm going to be showing you here today, these games are games that I think that you should be looking at on the console as it was the original teams that created these. These were games that may have been ported. We will get into backwards compatibility in a separate video and how I feel about the backwards compatibility projects. But these are the games that have the original intent, the way they were created and running on original hardware. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's start. We have Crazy Taxi 3. Now, Crazy Taxi 3 is the third game in the Crazy Taxi line with the first two games appearing on the Sega Dreamcast. Those games were later ported over to Nintendo GameCube, but on the original Xbox, that is where Crazy Taxi 3 is stuck for a variety of reasons, at least in all of its content, as a lot of the music tracks in that game, of course, would have to be renegotiated if the game were to be re-released on modern hardware. So if you want this game and all of its arcade glory, you can get it on the original Xbox. I love it. It's, it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely not something you see a lot of anymore. Next in the list, and they are remastering this one again. They There's going to be remasters, potentially, games that you can buy again. But 
Uh, again, we're not concentrating on that here. We have Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Now, Prince of Persia was the first game which brought back the series to then modern consoles. This game had a lot of parkour elements trying to capture some of the feeling, but in a more exciting manner than had originally been portrayed in the 2D Prince of Persia games. Uh, of course, there were elements of this game where if you messed up, you could actually reverse time. They are currently in the process, and by they, I mean Ubisoft is currently in the process of remastering the game, although currently there is no time of release set on that game, so right now the best way to play this is either in a collection form or to buy it individually on the original Xbox. The next game is a little bit more of a guilty pleasure. Uh, we, of course, right now there is only one baseball, well, I guess there's two baseball games if you want to count RBI out there, but the the premium game, the, the game that is going to be across all consoles, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch, is MLB The Show. However, the game that I'm about to show you, I think is much better than The Show. And that game is MVP Baseball 2005. Now this is, this right here, is probably one of my favorite baseball games besides All-Star Baseball 98 on the Nintendo 64. Just the way that you would run the bases, the way the game felt, the responsiveness, the the roster, because I have dropped off from following baseball at this point in time. Couldn't tell you who's out there, but this was definitely my era of baseball, and it's definitely still one of my favorite games out there. If you love the game of baseball, you love sports, I would definitely recommend checking that out on the original xbox 2004 is backwards compatible on the 360 but 2005 for some reason i don't believe made it to that console for one reason or another and of course you can't play those games on modern hardware so those games are stuck to the original xbox next we have splinter cell now splinter cell was a multi was cross console it was so it but originally it came to the xbox now this is the exploits of sam fisher a lot of people want sam fisher to come back in a new splinter cell game ubisoft has announced a game that is supposedly coming out sometime in the next few years however right now we don't have any idea of what that game is going to look like is it going to be a service are they going to do justice to the character it's hard to tell it has been quite a few years and the series went under some transition before it was ended with uh splinter cell blacklist which was on the 360 but if you want the original games, of course, you can play those on the original Xbox. I'm not sure, again, if they're backwards compatible, but we, I would have to look into that. If you're looking for original intent, you're looking for the way it was originally supposed to be played, another game you should check out on the original Xbox. And so the next several games are games that I would definitely call guilty pleasures. And these aren't necessarily games that I'm good at. These are just games that I really enjoy. DOA3. DOA3 was really my first uh, one. Uh, okay, maybe my second one. Mortal Kombat 4 being the first. But it was definitely a change in the way I looked at fighting games. Uh, this was the first uh, Japanese fighting game developed that I had ever played. I never got into Soul Calibur. I wasn't into Tekken. It was really growing up just Mortal Kombat. So I really enjoyed DOA 3. Uh, I do have DOA 4 on the 360, but that is uh, one of the games that I think uh, is worth checking out. It is a little bit aged. And of course, if you want to see the roots of the series, although these are ports, but it is on the original Xbox, you could also look for the dead or alive ultimate collection those you will find uh, out there in different uh, pawn shops or game retailers now the next two are certainly really guilty pleasures these aren't i wouldn't know know if i would call these 
great games, but these are games that I enjoy. And we've got Star Wars, Obi-Wan, and we've got The Clone Wars. Now, The Clone Wars I played on the Nintendo GameCube, and that game was kind of a spiritual successor to the Factor 5 games, the Rogue Squadrons for GameCube. That's originally why I got this game on uh, the GameCube, but... Um, fidelity wise, it's going to look better on the original Xbox because the original Xbox has more horsepower. And then you have Obi-Wan. You're playing Obi-Wan Kenobi as a young Jedi. He, it, this is during, or yeah, this is during the, this game was made after the Phantom Menace. So you're looking in that time period. This is before Obi-Wan got old, had a beard. Uh, it's you're fighting a lot of droids, but it is really interesting in how the lightsaber mechanics worked with that game in that you could do flourishes just by going up and down rapidly on the right stick. Or if you want to slice upward to the right, that's the way you would move the right stick. And although some of the traversal in that game was troubled at the very least, I do think that the force powers and the way that you really move with the lightsaber was very interesting and at least worth a look on the Xbox. The next game, and this is a game that I think everybody knows that it's been out on multiple consoles. However, it came out here first, and that is Knights of the Old Republic. This is one of my favorite games. This is a masterpiece in storytelling. I am going to be doing some videos on this for May the 4th, and I don't know if I could give this game enough praise. Like, this is all-time one of my favorites. The story is great. It, it, even out of modern-day Star Wars storytelling, I would probably prefer to go back and play this. Now, the game is, of course, going to be remade for the PlayStation 5. It's going to be a remake, not a remaster. Supposedly, story beats, some of the story beats are going to remain as they are supposed to be. But um, if you want the way this game was originally meant to be played, it can be played on the original Xbox. It is backwards compatible on Series X. You can play it on the 360, which I would be curious to see how that all compares. But you can play it in multiple places. It's been ported by Aspire now. But this is the way, by, this is the original. This is the Bioware version. This isn't a port. It's And this game is fantastic. If you've got an original Xbox, if you want an original Xbox, I would recommend adding that to the collection. Now, my next guilty pleasure, and I don't even know if a lot of people know this game exists, and it's weird because it's a golf game, but I have a lot of memories of this game, which I'll talk about again in another video, but we have Outlaw Golf. Now, Outlaw Golf was made by Simon and & Schuster Interactive. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, Simon & Schuster is a... Oh, geez, they're a book company. So just the thought of them making a golf game and a golf game that has got questionable characters, especially by today's standards, is rather interesting. The gameplay is pretty straightforward, pretty fun, and again, a game I think is worth putting in your collection. Now, a lot of people like snowboarding and uh, skiing games, extreme sports. This is my favorite. Now, SSX Tricky... I think is the best game in that series. A lot of people like three. I had three when it was originally released. This is still the best they have ever made. Now this, this goes with three. This is, there was another version that they called SSX later on that. I think that was on the 360. Didn't care for that at all. This is the pinnacle of that series. The original of course being on the PlayStation two. These games are stuck on their respective consoles. You cannot get this game anywhere else. So if you're out there in the market again, I would recommend this one. Again, I think it's the best in the series. It's fluid. It just runs. The, the courses are put together in a way that I think really makes sense. 
they don't try to do too much with them. Colors are bright, they're vibrant, and the characters, of course, are outrageous because it's EA Big. Next, we have The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. What can be said about Morrowind? A lot of people, of course, over the years have debated whether or not The Elder Scrolls III, IV, or V is the best one in the series. I'm not here to tell you which one is the best. I'm just here to tell you that I think this game is worth your time on the original Xbox. They had to actually do interesting tricks to get the game to run. And that is actually some of the really interesting things with the games on the Xbox. Even though the Xbox was a very powerful piece of hardware back when it was released, it wasn't a PC. It, it was trying to get there, but it wasn't quite a PC. And tricks had to be done to make games run, to clear caches, to get things to load in so i think bethesda did a great job with getting that game to run on the original xbox and i think especially this edition because it's the game of the year edition it's got all the expansion pack content is definitely something to check out now, talking about games that were technical feats on the original console next we have Doom 3. Now, this isn't BFG edition. This is the Doom with all the shadows, the darker version. You don't have a flashlight attached to the gun. You have to choose between the gun or the flashlight. And it was a technical marvel to get this game to actually run on the console because this was actually released later in the console's life cycle. Um around the same time if not a little bit before half-life 2 so we are really getting at the tail end of the console's life cycle and it's even though you can i think you can still get the original version out there on the pc i really feel that the console version of the game is worth having now, the Xbox console, of course, was not known as a family-friendly console. There was not a lot of platforming games on there. It was mostly known as the shooter box. But Microsoft did release a couple of games in the platforming genre, and we have two of those games right here. We've got Blinks and we've got Conquer. Now, both these games are platformers. Um, with Conquer, of course, being remade by Rare, and Blinks was done by an internal Microsoft game studio, which I'm sure is now defunct. I can't remember the name of the studio. They both had their own different quirks, um, but both games were really technically solid, and if you actually want to see what a platformer looks like from that generation... Again, those are worth owning. Blinks cannot be played anywhere but the original console at this point. And then last but not least in what I want to show you guys uh, here, at least in this segment of the video, is we have Ninja Gaiden Black. Now, these games, this game particularly, was re-released uh, recently as a collection, but it was the Sigma collection. So they were the Sigma versions of the games. I'm not sure completely what the difference is, but Ninja Gaiden Black on the original Xbox was meant to be a hard, hard version of the original Ninja Gaiden. Uh, well, not the original, but the original one for the Xbox with a little bit of extra content, I believe. And I don't think that game is well black is is compatible forward but if you have the original version of ninja gaiden uh that is not compatible on uh consoles and can only be played on the original xbox so you literally have to have that specific version if you want to uh play it uh forward on newer hardware now all these games are just a minor sampling of what Microsoft had to offer on the original Xbox console. There were over 900 games on the console. These are some of the ones that I think are worth your time if you're checking out hardware. There is, of course, a bunch more, and we can talk about other games in another video. But let's actually move on 
and conclude this and whether or not I think it's worth it in 2022. So is it worth buying an Xbox, an original Xbox in 2022? The short answer is yes. The long answer is with the plethora of ways to connect an original Xbox to modern televisions, with the games being cheaper, and with some games being locked to the original console, you can't go wrong in finding an original Xbox and playing some of the classic games. Additional games that I didn't show on this video, such as Jet Set Radio Future, are locked to the original Xbox and cannot be played anywhere else. The original Xbox has a library of over 900 games, only 69 of those being backwards compatible on modern consoles, although a good portion are backward compatible on the 360. If you are a gaming historian or you want to check out all the games that are potentially out there, good bad or ugly, then yes, I would absolutely recommend that you find an original Xbox in 2022. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it educational or entertaining, hit that thumbs up button. It allows the video to be distributed to more people out on YouTube. And if you enjoy this content and want to see an even deeper dive into specific games, or if you want to check out an Xbox 360 video, then hit that subscribe button and click the video over here. With that being said,